Hello, I'm John Chivaco, the co-chair of the NIGEO 2023 conference and a board member of the New York Geothermal Energy Organization. I'd like to welcome you to this recording of a live presentation from the conference, a two-day event which was held in Albany, New York on April 26th and 27th of 2023. This year's educational sessions and keynotes represent the latest in ground source heat pump system design, product innovations, and installation practices, along with important policy, regulatory, financing, and incentive updates. This presentation is one of over 40 sessions from the two-day event, all of which were recorded and available at NIGEO's website, www.ny-geo.org, along with session descriptions and a link to download the slides from each of the sessions presented. NIGEO is proud to make this content available to our members and other industry stakeholders. And if you are a member, thanks so much for your support and participation. If you find this content valuable and for some odd reason, you are not yet a member, consider joining NIGEO at the appropriate membership level with details available at our website. The live recording from the NIGEO 2023 conference will start in just a moment. Thanks so much for listening. All right, my name is John Shivako. I'm one of the <laughs> not clap worthy. I appreciate that though, Venetia. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, we've got, we have, you know, we're, we're one of those good problems that a number of the folks in our industry have is that we're a little bit oversubscribed on things. Maybe we didn't quite order enough food. So, and dinner might be musical chairs, so when the music stops, you know, you might want to find a seat. <laughs> but we've already increased the, the buy a couple of times, so we're, we're sort of packed. So be patient with the hotel and be patient with us. We're doing our best with uh, kind of an, uh, a, a big load of folks, which is lovely. Is Zach Fink even in the room? Oh, I was looking for someone with a tie on. But that's not who you are. Come up here because you and Jens are gonna be up in just a bit. All right, so I have some things I wanna go through with everybody and then we're gonna, um, so housekeeping wise, we have exits. They're like everywhere. Just run out those glass doors. There's some of the glass that aren't doors. Don't run right into those. Press on the little handle and you'll release. Sort of like, like the seatbelt thing on a plane, very simple. Um, there's bathrooms down here, and there's bathrooms as you kind of wind a little past registration as you go towards the Empire Room, which is the other key room. So there's three session rooms that we're going to be in. This is, the, this, this is three rooms. So over here, there's ABC is over there, and that's the exhibitor space that you have all of our um, mostly heat pump manufacturers. Then this is D. Um, this is E and this is F, and those are labeled outside. So when you see Salon D, E, and F, they're those. So what's going to happen when we finish here is those air walls are going to get pulled, and there's a little bit of space between the chairs there and there. That's like the third rail. You do not want to be there when we flip the room because those air walls will take you out. Okay? So just anybody that's there, keep your arms inside the vehicle. Watch it, you're right on that edge. If you're on that edge, we probably should have put like a big yellow thing there. Anyway, so as we go into the sessions, that's what you'll see. I wanna go through the schedule just a little bit for today. Um, so we've got, I wonder if that's gonna work. So this is an eye chart. Um, and so those of you who are my age or older, you're struggling right now. Which I, oh, wrong, wrong day. You know, my screen is a touch screen, and I keep touching this, and it is the wrong way to treat it. So we're going to start out. We've got, so the Empire Room, like I say, is the different room. And the Empire Room, anybody who came to registration, if you came from the hotel lobby, you passed the Empire Room. So that we've got some, um, so there's the three sessions here and that session. So there's four going on at once. So we're going to start the morning out, and your options going out of here are a lot of good ones, is the history of geothermal drilling, 
and then F is over here on the far side, and so that's going to be about energy modeling with Connor, and then we're going to have the clean heat programs in the middle, where I am right now, and then we're going to go into Heat Pump 101 with Jay Egg, and that's going to be over there. That's just to get you started. When you look at the schedule, probably a lot of you are like, ah, why did he put those three there? Because I want to go to two of those or three of those. That just means it's a good conference. I cannot make it so that everybody is going to be happy and can go and see everything. The good thing is we're going to do our level best, and I know I said it last year, and it was a lie, it turns out. We're going to record them, and we're going to make those recordings available and download of the presentations. We're a little better organized this year, and I think we'll pull it off. So if you can't see a session, there's a good chance you'll be able to review it later in your free time. I never do that, but at least we, we're well-intentioned when we think we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. But they'll be there. You'll just feel guilty because you didn't listen to it when you thought you would. Um, what do I want to say? So I, I do want to thank my uh, co-chair, Zach Fink, for helping out so much with this, and Christine Hoffer, who's running around. A lot of times the people I really need to thank, oh, she is in the back there. Lovely, our executive director. And we've got Desiree and Kathy from Aztec that are always at the registration desk helping out, which is lovely. John Rath's been really helpful. John Necroto from um, NYSERDA has been great. And uh, even Chris Winkler, he's really the, he ends up doing a lot of stuff to try to pull this together. Um, we've got room proctors. Chris Winkler is going to be over here. So if you're a moderator or speaker, he's a good person to know. And maybe you can identify yourself. So there's Chris Winkler. He's going to be over there. Matt Arison is going to be here in the center, and so he's, he's going to be in charge of this room. Um, and then we've got George Fischler. Where's George hiding? George is going to be over here. So if you're in session people in, in any of those rooms, those are good people to know. We've also got Desmond um, Volmar. Is Desmond around? Okay. And Desmond is going to be over in the Empire room today, so he's going to be helping keep that organized over there. And He's with NYSERDA, so thanks for helping out, Desmond. Um, Rachel Collet is going to be taking photographs, and she was here last year in the last couple years. If for some reason you don't want your photograph taken, just let her know. Um, otherwise, we're just going to put them everywhere because it's a big event, and we want people to see that we had a lot of people here, and, uh, and I think it's probably pretty cool. Um, and she does a great job, so thanks for that. Um, schedule, maps, uh, session recordings, great, 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 great. Tomorrow we start at the same time, so there'll be a lot of me telling you to stop networking, stop having fun, stop drinking coffee, and come in here and be on time. And I know that probably you'll go to bed early tonight, and so you'll be right on time, which will be lovely. Um, All right, we're going to have Zach Fink, who is our vice president of NIGEO and mm, a reasonable guy. I mean, if you know him, it's mixed. It's mixed at best, but we keep him around. He's, he's actually surprisingly capable. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have time to print his bio, so that's all I could come up with. <laughs> All right, go Zach. <laughs> well, with that introduction. <laughs> so I'm uh, Zach Fink, our Vice President of Nigeria. Um, so we want to thank all of our sponsors. Um, without the sponsors, the conference doesn't happen. Um, so we're going to have um, Water Furnace and Climate Master come up in a few minutes to say a few remarks. Um, as our gold sponsors, if you're feeling jealous, they get to come up and you don't. We have gold sponsorships available for next year. I still have one available for this year, actually. So if anyone wants to upgrade, we will put you up at dinner. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is available. Uh, breakfast is sponsored by CHA, so thank you for that. Um, do we have all the sponsors on this deck? Yeah, just gonna be this is a time. Okay. All right. So, um, keep going. so just keep talking. What do you? It, it worked. <laughs> We're better at geothermal systems and technology, apparently. Uh, so, um, and then, you know, our exhibitors, thank you for the amazing turnout. Um, as you notice, we keep adding more exhibit spaces. 
Um, the hotel told me yesterday that they do things they never do for us. Um, so they find new spaces, and I keep going to them, can we use this little corner over here? And they tell me no, and then two days later, they tell me they found a way to make allow us to use it. So uh, I want to give a thanks to the hotel as well for um, accommodating all of my crazy requests and uh, letting me change things 900 times. Um, and then, you know, lastly, Nigeo members. Um, anyone that doesn't have one of these green placards that say Nigeo member on it, you are missing out. So Jens told me right before I got up that he's gonna buy anyone a beer at the bar after this um, that joins today. And Christine said that we're gonna have a raffle for a $100 gift card for anyone that joins, to, you know, before the end of the conference. So we can uh, get you signed up at the, um, at the registration tables. And I hope by the end of the conference, everyone has a little placard that says Nigeo member on it. All right. Okay. All right. We got a really cool gift from um, Senator Schumer. And Senator Schumer, you might remember last time, did a uh, video introduction and welcome to the conference. And his office was gracious enough to do that again this year. And I want to play that for you. And Ryan um, from the Geo Exchange, where is Ryan? Is Ryan here? Ryan had too much fun last night. Um, did a really beautiful job about getting this arranged for us, so we were very grateful for that. Um, so we're gonna hear from Senator Schumer. Hi everyone, it's Senator Chuck Schumer. It's my honor to welcome you to the 2023 New York Geothermal Energy Organization Annual Conference. Friends, I spoke to you during last year's conference about the urgent need to address the climate crisis. I said then climate action would be one of my top priorities as, major as majority leader. This year I bring good news. I'm proud that we passed the Inflation Reduction Act, the most significant federal response to the climate crisis and the single largest investment in clean energy in American history. The IRA was premised on a simple but bold idea that to combat climate change, we need to make it much easier for the U.S. Tr transition to clean energy. So our new law included a panoply of tax credits to make it easier and more affordable to invest in green technologies, including a 30% tax credit for geothermal heat pump projects installed in the next decade. I'm really proud of this tax credit because I've seen for myself how GHPs have made a huge impact in New York. As our states face more and more extreme weather events, blistering heat waves in the summer, freezing blizzards in the winter, GHPs are providing a reliable, cost-effective green solution to so many New Yorkers and so many Americans. And each time a new home business or development installs a GHP, they're helping protect our environment, lower the risk of carbon monoxide, and get us closer to New York's wonderful and important goal of decarbonizing by 2050. So the benefits of GHPs are clear. You have my word to continue working with you to find new ways to support the industry and in the process, help New York and America transition to a clean energy future. Thanks again, my very best. I hope to see you all soon. All right, why don't we figure out which presentation we're supposed to have up. Um, I'm gonna introduce Jens, um, our president of Nigeria. Um, so Jens is gonna come up and give some opening remarks. Uh, just so everyone knows, we decided that we really wanted to sell that third sponsorship so, you know, for dinner. So we've moved the other two sponsors to dinner so you don't feel that you're gonna speak by yourself. So we're gonna have Water Furnace and Climate Master give some remarks at dinner, which will also help us get back on schedule. Um, we also have a conference app this year which um, is new. Uh, we have like 85 Aztec Geothermal people here that can help show you how to use the app if you have trouble. Uh, they live by the Aztec Geothermal booth. Um, and with that, Jens. Is this supposed to be up?
Good morning, everybody, and, and welcome. Uh, it's kind of an amazing sight here to look at this room here. It gets bigger and bigger and fuller and fuller. Uh, when we started this about, uh, about eight years ago, 2015, it's not long ago, first conference we had in Skidmore. And I think we had 62 people, and we're like, wow, this is incredible. Look at this, the dynamic in the room and everything else. So I remember Zach was one of the original founders myself, John Manning, where is he? He's on his couch here, next, next door, his <laughs> signature couch. Yeah, he's asleep for now, but you know, just go there and it's a love seat, okay, gotcha. So, um, three years ago, we were totally overwhelmed at the casino, and we moved out of there because we had 250 people there. It's like, wow, what a growth. So last year, we were at 400, and we're like, this is, uh, I, we don't know how to do this anymore. Uh, we have 700 plus registrants here for the next two days. <laughs> Not in my wildest dreams I would have imagined where this technology is going and where our realization is going, uh, what this can do and how important it is. In my opinion, the entire transition to renewable energy is not possible without this technology. And we'll talk about it, why? My slide here somewhere? I wanna show you one slide, just to make you realize, I think, what this is all about. And some of you have seen it. It's a very mood slide, but it kind of reflects a lot. Shot out of the hotel room. What do you see? You see some smoke coming up. That's, that's in April, the AC going on, the, tw the cooling tower taking thermal energy out of the building. At the same time, 100 feet to the side, the boiler is turning on to burn fossil fuels to make hot water. Doesn't that feel odd and really old fashioned and totally not appropriate anymore? In one way, we are rejecting thermal energy, trying to get rid of it, and then we're burning right then fossil fuels to make heat. This is so silly. Imagine we would have a technology where we can use one and save that thermal energy and not reject it in the atmosphere and then satisfy other thermal needs with it. Hmm, what could that be? This is what we're gonna talk about it. It's not new, it's not a new idea that we actually store that energy and reuse it and not getting rid of it. What's new is that we quantitate it and we start to put a dollar value on it. And let me tell you this will change everything. The numbers are staggering. They amazed me. And we have a lot of MAB projects going on now to validate this technology and prove it. So welcome to NYGO 2023. I stopped talking now. Uh, we moved you guys to the dinner. We think we're gonna have a very big, we're sold out for dinner. So make sure you all come claim your seat. And as John said, when the music stops, grab the seat immediately. It will be interesting. All right, thank you very much for coming. Looking forward to a great day today. Thank you, Jens. And now we're gonna have Zach Fink come up and introduce our keynote speaker. A, f a few years ago, um, someone in this room, I won't name him, he can name himself later if he wants, you know, had on his uh, Tinder profile, I designed GeoThermal for skyscrapers. This is 27-ish. By the way, that works, he's now engaged. Uh, <laughs> just in case anyone you know, needs a tip. And go, so I, I give him a hard time and I go, no one's doing geothermal for a skyscraper in New York City. And then a few months later, we started our first skyscraper project, um, a project in Coney Island with EcoSafe, who's in the room right now. Um, and then we get a call about the second one. And we go, this is cool, and they keep getting bigger. Just like our conference grows 50% in size each year, the buildings grow 50% in size. We go from 26 stories to 37 stories. And we go, wow, this is cool. People are actually doing this. Um, so um, really honored to be part of the One Jobber project. Um, there's very few projects that I think I'll be involved in in my lifetime that will actually transform the New York City skyline. And this is one right on the waterfront in Greenpoint that um, one of these days, Len Lease will let me build, bring the boat that I'll buy, you know, with my kids on it to their ferry dock, and I'll be able to say, that's the building we built. 
I'm, I'm working on that, guys. Uh, so, um, you know, before we let, you know, introduce Scott and have him come up to talk about the project, I just want to say to build a project like this, it takes everyone in this industry. We probably have every type of person in this room that it takes, if, you know, from the pipe manufacturer on this project to the drill rig manufacturers to the drillers that figured out how to get in the States from Canada to, you know, come for this project to, you know, the, the, the contractors being the prime for the construction to the engineers. So it really takes probably 50 to 75 of us that are in this room right now to actually pull off a project like this. So um, Scott Walsh, um, thank you for doing this. Uh, so, so a lot of times I call a New York City developer and I say, hey, you want to come to Albany to speak? And I get a, why Albany? So, um, so Scott was great. He goes to me, so who do you want there? And when is it? So um, Scott's the development director for the project um, and, and really was instrumental in helping make the geothermal system you know, come together. So with that, I'll have Scott come up and we'll let him talk about why One Java is such a groundbreaking project for the industry. Okay, good morning. Um, it's always great to be in the Albany area. I'm a big fan. Um, now, you're laughing, but I, I've lived in the Albany area for more than, for more than 10 years, so, so this is a, kind of my second home, but beyond New York City. So we're going to go through the sides quickly. The, the purpose of this is really kind of to pretend we can all go on a tour of our project in one Brooklyn, so I'm going to go through slides. Most of it's visual and give you a sense of how we got to where we are. So just a little bit on Lendlease. Lendlease is a global um, property developer um, uh, and construction firm. Headquartered in Sydney, Australia, we've been in New York City for many decades. These are some stats for, for time if you have questions about this. Uh, in the U.S., we have five gateway cities, Boston, uh, New York, Chicago, and then northern Southern California. And, and this is, you know, it's a very serious building business. Um, we're very proud of what we've built in New York City and our other gateway cities. I had the pleasure of uh, building the building on the far on your, on your far left, 277 5th, which is the tallest residential building on Fifth Avenue. Uh, unfortunately, it's fueled with uh, natural gas, but we, we weren't as sophisticated as we are now. Uh, and then my colleague, Eric Tinkhauser, who's sitting in the front row and who will, who will come up so we can answer some questions, is in our construction business. So we're, we're what we call a vertically integrated developer. We not only develop for ourselves, but we also use our uh, construction business, which is one of the best in New York City. And this is some stats on our uh, New York City construction business. So again, mindset, we're going to go to Brooklyn for a few minutes. This is the context. We're in the neighborhood of Greenpoint, Brooklyn, uh, which for those who have either lived or been to Brooklyn, it is in uh, northern Brooklyn, right on the border of Queens at Newtown Creek, directly across um, from the kind of Stye Town, Peter Cooper Village uh, development. Historically, it was a manufacturing district, uh, so this is a, a picture from the mid-1800s when it was developed as an active ship-baking, black arts, glass-making porcelain. Uh, if you fast forward to, you know, to what I would say, the, our current generation, as industry left New York City, uh, industrial sites along the waterfront have been rezoned, um, especially uh, you know, during the Bloomberg administration. And those have brought way for the development that we're ultimately doing today. Uh, the project is a full, full uh, block site, 200 by 600. That was important in our ability to do a geothermal system given the size of the building. This gives you a context map. Our, our building, oops, I can't do a pointer. Our building, I'll, we're, we're seeing it in a minute. There is a pointer at the top? Okay. Well, we won't. We won't go there. Exterior, we're in a traditional masonry construction neighborhood, so you'll see a lot of brick. Active retail, we're building a number of townhouses. This, you saw at the beginning, is the entrance to the building off a street called India. Uh, the building is on the East River. It has a public park that's part of the development. This is called the River Perch. It has, it's a combination of five buildings, two towers on the waterfront, and three low-rise buildings that we had just passed. This gives you a sense we're looking, we're, we're standing in the middle of the East River looking north um, in, the, in the kind of far 
and your far left of the slide is Long Island City, which is just across the Newtown Creek. This is the beautiful park we're building, which again, don't have to memorize these. Uh, again, we're very proud of our, our rooftop pool, which again, will be, will be heated through the geothermal system in the building. These are interiors just to give a sense of, of the kind of look and feel. Again, this is, a, this is part of the Affordable New York program. So this project has 30% affordable housing um, and then otherwise is market rate rental. And it will, it will open in late 25, um, early 26. So at, at the Lindley's company founding, the real principle was that, that companies have, you know, both a justification to society um, and the communities they serve, which is one of the underpinnings of how we got into our sustainability uh, mission. Uh, we are a mission zero company with net zero carbon by 2025, so we've actually achieved that early. Absolute zero by 2040, and a social uh, value investment of 250 million by 2025. Um, so at one Java, the question really became: we're, we're a company that won't build a building at this point with natural gas or oil. Uh, so the question was: it was going to be an all-electric building. So in a cold climate, what was the most efficient way to build a big building? Um, uh, with electric and so I think that you don't really need a big presentation on this in this room you guys know the kind of uh, reason to do this so uh, again some of these some of these slides are for a little bit different audience but you know elimination of gas we do have gas for emergency generator but otherwise everything in the apartments and then the centralized systems are all all based on geothermal or electric and, and this was the comparison that we, we went through uh, in the process of coming to the conclusion that we did, where we looked at a base case, a cooling tower boiling system, which was actually for our sustainability requirements, not, not it, it, it's here for presentation purposes, but not an option. And then we looked at an all electric versus a geothermal building. And we'll go through that. This is, I think, I think Eric will come mention this when he comes up. I think this is the, the test, the test that was done. So, so this site again, this is a formerly manufacturing site. It had a large, large manufacturing building on it that was torn down. The, the site was tested for its viability for geothermal before we, before we really kicked off with Zach and, and all the other engineers who, who worked with us on this. And we were assisted greatly by some of our, our colleagues at l &M, our colleagues at Cornell Tech, I think for those of you, you know, in different parts of the state, Cornell has had, you know, a real commitment to sustainability both on the Ithaca campus and on the New York City campuses. Um, and then for, for New York City folks, uh, you know, we did have the foresight, obviously local law 97 and one, I think 154 were all in place when we were, when we were buying this site and working on it. So this building has really been built to respond to all the local carbon laws in New York City. And we'll go through that. And so, again, kind of always great to see the city city in detail. You can see our site. You can see Queens and Brooklyn on to the left, and then obviously Manhattan, Central Park. Um, that is the full block site right, right after uh, Eric had demoed the existing building. So this is this is... Uh, about a year or two, a year and a half ago, I guess you would say. There's the demolished site. And then this is a 4D, just to kind of quickly, quickly, you know, the complication of this project is an urban area. So, uh, you know, Lendley's construction is very adept at building in complicated urban areas, but how, how the work was sequenced. So this is a 4D that just really takes through the beginning of the project. We ultimately have ramped up to four. Uh, well, this actually... We, we did, and, and this may be the crazy part, we did, we did do pile driving um, first, and we did have overlap, so, so GEO did not start and then foundation work. So it was, it was uh, Santa's workshop uh, on our site, to say the least. Uh, and this just takes you through, I mean, Lend-Lease has a really uh, high, high uh, safety requirement, so you can see the containment zones and how we're separating different workers to do these tasks simultaneously. And this just, I mean, this, this probably for this, I, I, you know, in some ways I love this drawing, but you guys, you guys do this every day, so um, it's not as maybe as exciting. 
it, not as exciting for you. But so this is this is more the Eric will remind us what exact week we're in, but this is more akin to the stage we're in now, where we have four four drill rigs on the site. Uh, we have all of our foundation work complete, uh, and so it is you know, just working through, moving through those. So that was a, hopefully that was a quick, we could go from Albany to Brooklyn in, in kind of 10 minutes, and my colleague Eric Tinkhauser, who's building all of this, is going to come up, and I think we can answer questions that folks have, how we got here and why we did it. Hey everyone, just hold on one second while, because we're trying to record audio this year. Um, if we can get the mics around, we would appreciate it. Hi, Jason Masters, uh, Director of Energy for Borough Happold. So when you guys are going through your feasibility for this, how, what were the, the criteria that you, were, that you needed to go through to select this site to get it approved? Yeah, so, so, I mean, I think the first, you know, our business is primarily a residential business um, and likes to build at scale. So, so I would say we, we didn't start with the site from a, from a you know, how, how are we going to heat it and cool it. We started from the site that we thought the kind of dynamics of where it was located and the market it was in was very compelling for our business. It's viewed, we have a pension fund who is a co-investor with us on the site who will own the building long term. So, so we were really focused on the real estate. The, the turning point for this project was how do we build an all electric building that, that has a high affordability component to it that y you don't lose your shirt on. Um, so you know, obviously this, this room knows more upfront costs, but over the life of the project, we get a lot of the cost back and then some. So that was, I would say that was, we started with the real estate. You know, we liked the real estate first and, and we felt the economics were there. Um, and again, building a lot of affordable housing with a lot of mechanicals is a, is a fine balancing act. Because we're, you know, 30% of these apartments, you know, are gonna be affordable to people who make 70% of the AMI, um, which we're really committed to socially, but that is, you know, a very fine needle to thread to get the economics to work. Hi, Jermaine Massey with Celsius Energy. Uh, very curious about that project, it looks amazing. Um, in the building, it's kind of a technical question. Are you guys using refrigerant uh, through, through, throughout the building? And the second question, um, well, I'll let you answer the first one. Zach is the designer, so it's big business. So yes, all, it's a vertical stack heat pump job. So um, every heat pump has a small amount of refrigerant in it. It's not main refrigerant runs running through the building but you do need refrigerant to power the compressors pretty much for all technologies. Thank you. So we have a question over here. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Kim Fratchek, the director of Sane Energy Project. You have Greenpoint in the house over here. Um, so we're really excited um, to ask you, can this geothermal system be expanded into our neighborhood for a district system? All right, so this wasn't be, supposed to be a question and answer for me, but uh, that's okay. So this is actually a nicer uh, community heat pump funded project under Pond 4614. Um, if we put up the picture of the site, it's actually five separate buildings, if you ask me, uh, that are all interconnected. Um, and so to be expanded, um, we did look at it as part of potentially one of the utility thermal network pro projects. Um, there is a small dry cooler to keep the building in thermal balance. Um, so we could pull off enough heating to potentially do, say, domestic hot water or heating load for adjacent buildings, but we wouldn't have enough extra capacity to be able to pick up cooling on those adjacent buildings. So there is a potential to expand it, um, but you know, design changes would need to be made kind of now to allow for that. Well, there's not a district system in the neighborhood. So it is, if the neighborhood had a, you know, Lend-Lease 
in our Australian business is very interested in district systems and has a history of, of building them. So if the neighborhood had supported a district system, we would have uh, been very much on board with that. Hi. Um, Dan Seklikov, uh, New York Geothermal. Um, if you guys, if you guys could uh, share this information, um, how many uh, boreholes did you guys make for this project, and what's 320. the three twenty? Lovely. And what's the overall footage of the building? I, I, I know this is a tricky thing, but still. Maybe are you asking this, the gross square footage of the total building correct, we finished? Correct. It's, it's under eight hundred thousand gross square feet. Um, you know, it's got a thirty-seven story tower and a twenty twenty story tower, and then low rise buildings to the to the east of the two towers. Got it. Got a pretty good job. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. We still got to get Eric. Still got to get it built. So right. so so thank us. Thank us. We we're we're you know right. We're kind of a, more, a little more than a third through the geothermal boreholes. So I think we're you know somewhere over a hundred of the three twenty as of today. Hello. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Tan with PSEG Long Island. I was wondering how are you um, monetizing or transferring the the, there's an incremental cost that you need to put into the system that your tenants will be the one who's going to be the benefit of it. How are you going to be monetizing that or um, making them pay more or because you'll be offsetting, the, you, they'll be paying less energy, but they're not paying for the infrastructure that you're putting in right now. So how are you going to recapture that because there's a cost of the owner versus the tenant. There's always been a disconnect between the people yeah. who uses the energy, which is the tenant, and then the landlord who or the owners that are making the costs of the investment. So you're making this great investment, but ultimately your tenant is the one who's gonna be benefiting, but I think you need to get your investment recouped. How are you kind of bridging that gap? So so it, it is, it is. this is where we all wish the world was more fine-tuned than it really is. So you, the apartments the apartments on the affordable end, those, those rents will be set by folks' income. So whether you're a family of one or a family of four, that will determine the rent that you pay, assuming you qualify by the income bands. So, so in that in that cohort of thirty percent of the building, th those are strictly driven on you know what people you know basically you know their number in the lottery and then their income and family size. For the seventy percent of the market rate um, people, you know, I, I think it's a valid question, but I do think ultimately. There will be people who will consciously know that they live in a building that, that doesn't um, that is truly carbon neutral. Uh, we think that does have monetary value, but I can't sit here today to tell you I would increase the rents two percent. I would increase them five percent to capture that. I mean, some of this some of this is going to be operating the buildings for a few years to really see what kind of savings we do. I mean, we obviously, from an engineering standpoint, have esti est estimates of this, and we will work to set the rents appropriately, but depending, you know, how tenant tenant friendly or owner friendly the environment the building lease is up in, ultimately the market will really determine how much uh, folks pay. This this neighborhood has very expensive apartments like a lot of New York City neighborhoods. Um, and I think the nuance of this system, um, we, we really have to figure out how to market that to people. And I think we do have to, the building is committed to figuring out how that almost like your your Nest thermostat tells you how much you use it. We need we need tools that tell renters or homeowners how much you know environmental impact they're making or not making, if that's the case. But but sitting here today, those technologies are definitely you know not advanced. And just so everyone knows, in a boiler tower system, the developer typically pays for energy to heat a water loop, so it's a double lift system. Um, where you typically, you know, so the developer would normally spend a few hundred thousand dollars a year on, a, on natural gas or, you know, an electric heat pump to inject into that boiler loop. So because the geothermal system, it's just pumping energy. They've already bought their, you know, to steal Jens's term, battery storage. They've already bought that thermal energy. Um, there is some savings to the building side as well associated with it. And then one of the things that makes this really nice is there's also savings on the tenant side. So both sides save. There wasn't a cost shift, which is something that we're concerned about on the affordable units um, to the tenants, so the tenants don't end up paying more. Um, and then HPD actually created a program, which is New York City Housing Preservation Development, 
to allow for a lower utility allowance than normal, uh, which is the first time they've done it on a geothermal project. Yeah, and just HPD is how the affordable units are regulated and, and the market rate units as well. All right. There might be one question. So we got a question over here. No, we, we don't, no, nope, do not do that. We have a question right here, sorry. <laughs> Stand up. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> all right, this is our last question, so. I'm, I'm Jack Deanna from the. Uh, okay. I thought I was a ventriloquist for yeah, a yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jack Deanna, I'm with the uh, Geothermal National and International Initiative. It's not a question, it act, it's actually a statement. You, do, you guys are doing a great job, Zach's, everybody in, but this is gonna be a model, but I don't want you to overthink it, okay? Don't think about we gotta do the whole neighborhood for the question that was asked before. That's gonna come, but I'm gonna use this as a model all over the country, and especially the fact that yeah. you've got affordable rents involved, so yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to get done piece by piece. Appreciate that comment. Great. And I guess, do we want to answer the sub? The, the electric is sub -Z, the Electric is submetered for the apartments, which is, is is common for New York City. And then all the public areas, you know, they they are submetered as their own account. Um, so so the usage, in, you know, is paid, and that's common for you know any almost any vintage of building built in the last thirty years. Okay. Well, it's great to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. And, and perhaps the most awesome thing about it is that he had like 74 slides, which just made me panic. <laughs> I was like, oh no, we're going to have to cancel the whole program for the day. But that was great. You flipped right through them and that was terrific. And, and if you build another skyscraper, we'll have you back. <laughs>